Okay, so let's get right into doing the test. So I'm going to uh, first show you how to set up to do a three-point bending test on this stainless steel rod. And so the first thing you have to do is create a test method. And so if you go to the test methods, uh, there's a lot of methods on here. Um, and you'll see a couple that are most useful for us. We could, for testing something like this, we can either use the compression method or the flexure method. Um, and really, it doesn't matter because all we want to do is move the thing down and measure the force it takes. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll, we'll just choose the uh, compression method just to make things as simple as possible because that's all we're doing. And now we want to set things up. And so like I said, a lot of these settings on the general, it just doesn't matter. We don't need that. We don't need to describe our sample all these things like what kind of inputs and stuff, we just don't need those things. Uh, specimen, again, we don't really need to do that. This is where it could do some uh, pre-calculations and stuff. Measurements, we don't need to do. Calculations, we don't need to do. Uh, what we are going to focus in is our uh, test control. And so uh, we could do some pre-test stuff, but we're not going to worry about that. Really, we're just going to focus on this test and end of test. Okay, so we'll start with test. And so this is basically setting up what's going to happen while the test is running. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a ramp. Uh, and we're going to ramp a certain amount of displacement in this case. And so that's why it says control mode displacement. We could do a control mode force um, or some of these other things, but we're just doing displacement. And then what you really are going to have to think about is how fast you want this test to run. Okay, and so there were some, um, uh, you know, questions in the pre-lab quiz to think about how far things are going to deflect. And I'm going to tell you right now that this bar is not going to deflect very far at all. I mean, the, maybe a half millimeter before we get there. Um, and so if we think, okay, absolute max would be a half millimeter. You know, if we want that to happen over maybe 30 seconds, um, then our displacement rate in that case would be one millimeter per minute. And so I, that's why I'll type in just one millimeter per minute. You could do this in millimeters per second or per hour or whatever. We wouldn't even do micrometers, it looks like. So uh, but I'm just going to stick in one millimeter per minute, which seems to be pretty slow. And that's all we're going to want it to do. We're just going to want it to. Uh, to move at that speed until we get to an end of test condition. And one of the end of test conditions that's always on here is this measurement rate of force of uh, 40%, which basically means something has broken. Okay? We're not going to break the steel rod. Maybe when you're testing bones, you'll break those. So one of the end of tests that no matter what you're doing, and what I want you guys to include in every test method you make, is this um, system has a one kilonewton load cell on it. That means it can measure forces up to one kilonewton. And so we want to protect the load cell from breaking by making sure that we never get anywhere near that. And so one of the things we're going to look at is instead of measurement, we're going to do measurement level. And we're going to measure the force. And we're going to say we never want the force to be uh, greater than 0.8 kilonewtons. So in other words, if the force ever gets to be 0.8 kilonewtons, it will end the test. That gives us 20% margin to protect the load cell. Okay, uh, the other thing we might wanna do is like a, you know, how far it moves type thing. So again, we can do a measurement level displacement. Like I said, I doubt this is moving a half millimeter. So we'll go ahead and put in here a half millimeter So what's going to happen is when it hits any of these criteria, the test will stop. I could add another criteria if I wanted, right? If there was something else I wanted to do. Um, and so at the end of test action, we can do a couple different things. Number one, we could stop. Number two, we could return. Um, returning is pretty convenient. Uh, so I would you know, possibly do that. But I also want to show you guys how to manually uh, return. Um, the, the crosshead, so I'm going to stick it on stop, but if you guys want to stick it on return, that would be totally fine. 
there are no pneumatic grips to release, and you know, there's actually not a speaker, so playing a, play a sound won't really matter either. So right, that's really all we need to do. We need to set up the test. We need to set up the end of test. This data is not something we really need to worry about, other than the fact that it's showing us that it's going to measure um, basically at every 20 milliseconds, uh, which is, is, is fine for us. Okay, then we get to these other areas like console. Um, you know, this is showing us our, what dis, what's on our displays. Um, so this might be something worthwhile. So we could change it here. We could also change it later. Uh, but I'll show, show you how to change it here. So one of the things that this is going to output is force in kilonewtons. Again, because this is a one kilonewton frame, like at most it's going to display one. So I usually like to change the units on this to newtons. And how many decimal places in newtons? I'll put just three decimals is, is pretty good. Right, and that way we'll see it go from, you know, one to a thousand rather than from zero to one. Um, so that's something we could do on the console. You know, you could put other measurements on there if you wanted, like time. Again, we're not, we're not worrying about like compressive stress and strain because in order to calculate that in the software, you would have to like put in the, the specimen dimensions and things like that. And we just, we just care about the displacement and force. That's all we need out of this. Again, you could set up different, um, different things here. I'm not gonna worry about that. But the workspace, again, it, we don't really need all that. But the one thing that we do need to do on workspace is go to raw data and make sure we're outputting the correct raw data. And so, all again, all we need is time, displacement, and force. Okay, um, this is this is more important though, is to make sure that when we're doing our raw data output, we are doing it in units of newtons. And again, I'll just put three decimal places. Um, you could do significant figures instead of decimal places, but I'll just do three decimal places. Um, and so the reason you don't want to do kilonewtons is because um, it just won't show up at, with this much resolution. And so when you try to plot, it'll be like 0 0.01, 0 0.02 for too long, right? And we really want to see, be able to see the force in newtons, especially for the softer uh, materials like bone and some of the plastics. So this is important to make sure on the raw data you change the force to units of newtons. And then the exports, because this is what we also really want, is that we want to export the raw data. Um, there's a couple different things here, um, you know, saving the report. You, you could, you don't, you don't have to use this. I'll turn off saving the report because the report again is for like a company to develop this cool report format where it's going to like, you know, make a page where it's going to show the graph and, and data and calculations and stuff. We don't care about that because you guys are doing your own reports and doing your own math. Uh, and so we'll go to export. And so what we're going to want to do is um, basically set up how it's going to export. Uh, the export frequency, I change it from uh, on demand to just after each test. That way you don't have to worry about forgetting. Like when it finishes a test, it will export the data. Um, it will overwrite with warning if that's what you want to do. Um, some of the things that you might not want to export are like these results tables. And so you can see down at the bottom uh, what, it's, what it's going to export. But I don't really need the results table, right? What I really want is the raw data. And so it's showing what that will look like. And it's going to be this table. And it's going to have time, displacement, and force, which is exactly what I want. Okay? So really, that's all you need to do. A lot of this other stuff is just not necessary again. We're just going to do that export. We don't need export two. Um, we're just sticking with one export of the raw data as a CSV uh, file. You could set your file settings. You could set a default folder here if you want, um, which you know you could set to whatever. Uh, I think setting it to the desktop might be fine. You know the Blue Hill has this output directory that they like to export to, so you can do whichever. I'll just say desktop for now. Um, and hit select on that. 
and now we're pretty much done setting up our method. Okay, so just remember, test control, we want to do test, end of test, on the console. You don't have to do this now, but you might set your units of force to newtons rather than kilonewtons. And on the workspace, we're making sure that for sure you're setting your raw data units to newtons and not kilonewtons. And then export, you're setting up your uh, export your raw data to a CSV file after every test. And that's really all you have to do. So then we'll go ahead and save the method. Um, and it just wants to know where you want to save it. Um, so like, again, it's putting it in these Blue Hill Universal templates. Um, again, maybe I'll just go ahead and put it on the desktop uh, to make things easy. Uh, it needs to know my file name. So this is where, like, you have to type in a file name. So I'm going to shoot bending test. on the desktop. Okay, so now we have saved our method and now it's time to run the test. So we can go back to home. Okay, and then there's the, you know, there's the three things. We did the method, you're not going to use admin ever, and so now the next thing is test. Um, and then uh, what's going to happen is it's going to show up with the methods that we have. So this training method is was on here before. I could probably delete that and not worry about that anymore. But we just made this bending test method, right? That's what I just saved the method as. So I'm going to select that. And then it's going to give us a, uh, a, a warning to make sure we set the travel limits. I've already done that. It, that's these yellow um, things over here to make sure that um, that the thing doesn't like run into each other. So I've already done that, but you do want to check and make sure that uh, you can see there's a a black piece that will hit the yellow if it goes too far, and that will cause an automatic stop. And so that's just making sure it's in the right spot. So we'll hit OK. Okay, it comes up and it's, it's basically ready to go. And so what we do need to do is you can see on the frame, we're gonna focus on the frame right now, is that the, this light under disabled is labeled, right? Or it's lit up. And so that means that nothing can happen, right? I can't move, it even tells us that the frame is disabled, the jog action uh, can't be set up. So I do wanna move this up a little bit before I stick my steel beam in there. So I have to hit this unlock button and you can see that light goes from disabled to set up. And so now I can move the frame a little bit and you can see the displacement changes as well on our screen. And I can go ahead and set my steel beam in here. And actually what I'm going to do is I can set these, these a little bit wider. I'll go ahead and set them out at 10. Okay. And now what we're going to want to do is make sure this is set up correctly um, so that it is just touching the steel beam. And so what I'm going to look at is the force on my screen. And I'm going to slowly lower this very, very, very slowly to when it just touches Okay, and so you can see when I, when I touched it, the force jumped up to 150. So I'm going to come up just a little bit off of that. 
Okay, so I am probably really close to where I need to be, right? Like one more touch and it moves it to just, just right where it's, it's ready to start. And so now what I'm gonna to wanna to do is make sure I go ahead and zero out uh, the displacement and the force. Um, this is, again, this is something you don't necessarily have to do because we can do it uh, when we do the post-test analysis, but you can go ahead and click on it and just hit balance and it will zero out the force. And you can go ahead and click on the displacement and zero out the displacement as well. And now we're pretty much ready to run our test. Okay, because we have everything set up. We have the force and displacement set to zeros. And now to run it, you first have to hit this unlock button on the machine. And then within a couple seconds, you hit this arrow, this play button on the test. So I'll hit unlock and it says caution and it's waiting. So I hit, see I wasn't fast enough. Um, so it just, it wants you to make sure that you're, you're being deliberate about this test. So you hit that and hit play and it will start testing. So you can see we get a very nice linear region here. Okay, and so what happened is the test ended. Um, it, re it looked like it, it hit the 800 newtons uh, or 0.8 kilonewtons, and now it wants to just save uh, this as our file name and so I have to type in a file name here by bringing up the and I'll just call this uh, stainless steel one okay and so we've run the test and now we're ready to uh, like it's still compressed down and so this is where at the end of the test right we put stop in there so I could have put the return so it would automatically just go back to zero displacement but I wanted to show you uh, if you didn't do that how you can go back to zero displacement and so that's what this I guess the button above the play button the rewind button is for so I hit unlock and hit the rewind button and you can see it goes back to, to zero displacement and the, the force is again um, not holding the thing in right so we've run that material we could then go to our next material, you know, rerun it again. And so I'm just gonna show you what things look like on here is that on our desktop, right, we have our CSV output where we can see time and displacement and force, right, in our three columns in the CSV file. Okay, and that's the data you'll analyze. Uh, Excel is not on this machine, so that's why it opened it up in Notepad and not Excel. Um, but you could go ahead and like put this uh, log into like your Google Drive and put it on Google Drive or Box and then do the analysis later.